To those of you celebrating your birthday in the month of May, we just want to say Happy Birthday! Woo! We love you! Woo! Hi kids! Welcome to Young. I'm Miss Bebet and I'm so excited to be here with you today. Have you ever trained or prepared yourself for something before? Maybe a music recital or a sports competition or maybe even, even an exam in school? You would need a lot of practice to prepare yourself for it, right? Every day you would need time to study or time to train so that when the time comes, you will be ready. Well, today's lesson, Apostle Paul talks about training for a particular type of race. Now before we check it out, let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for gathering us here today. Please let us learn your word and listen to the Apostle Paul, Lord Jesus. Let this lesson keep in our hearts forever. In the name of you we pray, Amen. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Corinthians, Chapter 9, verses 24 through 25. Did you know that some writers of the Bible talk sports? Well, not every sport, but at least one that you are familiar with. Yep, running. Running has been around ever since, well, since God created people. In fact, the Apostle Paul uses running as an example in one of his letters to the church in Corinth. In a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. You know that, don't you? So run in a way that will get you the prize. Now, Paul is talking about more here than just running, but first you have to understand what it takes to run a long race. 
Let's say you want to run a marathon. That's 26.2 miles. <laughs> There's no way you can just hop up off the sofa where you've been playing video games for months and run that far. So, you need a plan. When I was preparing for my first marathon, <clears throat> I found this plan. I started training more than four months ahead of the race. And I started with just a few miles at a time. Once you've got a plan, well, then you got to move. That means short runs, long runs, and cross training to work other muscles and prevent injury. Next up, you've got to fuel. Plenty of water, of course. Plus, you need healthy carbs for your long runs like bananas. And maybe some spaghetti and meatballs. Mmm. Mmm. What's the last part of your training? Get ready for it. Rest. <sighs> if you don't rest and let your body recover, you'll get burnt out or injured. The last few days before a marathon, you don't even run at all. Oh, <sighs> yeah. Running a long race is no joke. But Paul says what we're doing right now, you and me, is even more important. All who take part in the games train hard. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. So I do not run like someone who doesn't run toward the finish line. I do not fight like a boxer who hits nothing but air. Paul packs a lot of weight into just a few sentences. Whether you planned it or not, we are all running a race right now. Okay, so that's a little crazy. Clearly, I'm standing here talking to you, and you aren't outside running laps either. But Paula is talking about a way of life, a journey. We're all focused on the finish line, life forever with Jesus. But in the meantime, every step along the way is important as we live out what matters most. Jesus reminded his followers, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yep, love God, love others. That's what matters on this journey together. But just like you can't skip from jogging one lap around the school gym to running a 26.2 mile race, you're gonna need some practice. Your Love God, Love Others Marathon needs a training plan. Now, none of us have it all figured out, but here are four important things to start with. In fact, you may already be doing some of them. First point, here. God is the master teller of this amazing story. He's the author of this whole race. So the most important thing is learning to hear from God. That means digging into God's word and hearing the stories and wisdom from people who walked with him. And you can also hear from God from people around you in your life who know and follow him. Now, here's the second step in training for our Love God, Love Others Marathon. Pray. Okay, when you hear pray, you might think, Truth is, you don't need fancy words to pray. You can talk to God anytime, anywhere, about anything. Just like talking to your mom or your best friend. Now let's take a look at point three in our training plan. Talk. Hello out there! Tell other people what God has been up to in your life, what's changing, how you're learning to love others better. And here's the final point in your Love God, Love Others training plan. Live. Live for God. Let his love fill up every part of your life, at home, at school, at church, even when your dad makes you stop reading your book to play a game with your little sister. Hear, pray, talk, live. That's how you practice loving God and loving others. As Paul wrote, So run in a way that will get you the prize. We do it to get a crown that will last forever. And when you do, you will live out Paul's wisdom to the Corinthians and win the race. So Apostle Paul talked about training for a race, but this race is more than just a racing competition. It's about life. Sometimes life can feel like a race. That's why we have to train for it and make a commitment to practice what matters most. Jesus taught us what matters most is to love God and love people. It may sound easy, but loving people can be hard sometimes. That's when we have to rely on God's strength and not our own. Now, let's go to our key passage. 
today's key passage is taken from Matthew 22, verse 37 to 39. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Let's say together one more time. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's quiz time! Today, we only have one question, but there are four parts to the answer. Are you ready? Alright, let's go! What are four things we can do to practice loving God and loving people? Number one, do you remember kids? That's right, it's here. Hear from God. Number two, what is it? Yep, you got it. It's pray, praying to God. Number three, do you know what it is, you guys? Right again, it's talking, talking about God. Number four, last one, do you remember? It's live, live for God. Woohoo! Great job, kids. Well, that's it for today, kids. Thank you so much for spending your Sunday with us. Remember, we have our weekly contents on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We'll see you in our Zoom classes later this afternoon. Before we go, let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for teaching us your word today. Please let it be in our hearts so that we can keep it forever. In the name of you, we pray. Amen. Bye, kids! <laughs>